Hi there, fix that car here with a piece on engine management. Now the best way to learn about engine management is to follow a fault through and that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I don't know what the fault is with this car, all I know is that it is an intermittent starter. Now it has some history and some money has been spent on this. There's a, an invoice here from nine months ago uh, and it says investigate starting non-start. Uh, work carried out, repair to earth wire, and that's by a Vauxhall main dealer. Then some seven or eight months later, there's another receipt here for £191, and that's to check out vehicle for non-starting, check for fault codes, check wiring, blah, blah, blah. So £240 has been spent on this car, and it still has the same fault. And that's what we're going to try and identify and fix in this, uh, in this episode. I'm sitting here in the car with it connected up to some uh, diagnostic software and I also have a multimeter sitting across the battery so I can watch the battery voltage. First things first, let's look for any existing fault codes. Switch the ignition on and press the button. No diagnost, no, no, no DTCs present, so there's currently no codes. The reason for that is the battery's been disconnected and it's cleared the ECU. I'll uh, just go back from that. I'm going to leave this connected. I'm going to try to start the car. So let's see what happens. <laughs> Well, lo and behold, it starts completely normally. Let's have a look at the voltage there. It's gone to 13.7 volts, which is completely normal. No light showing. Now let's have a look and see if any fault codes have appeared. No fault codes. Which creates a mystery. Well, after starting perfectly for a number of times, this morning it's finally refused to start. Let me demonstrate. So let's have a look at the fault codes. Wow, we've got a P1612. Now we've seen the immobiliser fault code. Uh, we've gone into the immobiliser section of OPCOM and in front of us we can see the measuring blocks and if we look at the transponder key and the uh, transponder status it's invalid. We're going to test the, uh, the, the uh, immobiliser solenoid by uh, inserting a key. So would you like to place that key in? And turning on. And we can see that the immobiliser has recognised the key. We can see 12 volts has appeared and transponder key 3 has appeared. Next stage, we're going to look at the body control module. To see what the communication between the immobiliser and body control module looks like. at the fault codes. Got a whole series of uh, fault codes there. Critically, uh, we've got a CAN bus, no communication with ECM. I think that's probably because the immobiliser switched it off. Can we look at the immobiliser now to see if we've got any fault codes there? Ah, well, there we have our final and most critical piece of information. We've got B3040, communication malfunction on, on W wire line. So there's communication failure between the immobiliser and the body control module. Off we go looking for a wiring fault. So we now know the most likely cause of the non-starting on this car is a wiring fault between the immobiliser and the body control module which is under the bonnet first place I'm going to have to take a look at is just behind the instrument cluster here. 
to get at this, the cowling around the back of the steering wheel needs to be removed. I've already taken this off. This is relatively simple. There are two plastic clips at the front here, which can be a bit of a challenge to, to remove. You need to get a screwdriver behind the steering wheel. The top then lifts and tilts away. The bottom's held in place by three screws. There's two from the top there, which you'll see immediately, and there's one underneath, which you'll, you'll find when you crawl around underneath. To, act, to remove the uh, area around here, the first thing to do is remove this little cubby hole. And I use these plastic trim tools. They're great because you can press them in, get things apart, and you don't leave any damage, any scratch marks or anything like that around the, the plastic trim. This panel here is held in place with two little torque screws. That's one. And that's the other one. There you come. And it should just then clip out, which it does do. There are then three screws that hold this plastic around the speedo in place. There's two there, one the other side, and there's one at the top hiding underneath the, uh, the, the shroud there. I'm going to remove those and uh, we'll see what we find. With the three screws out, the way to remove this plastic trim is put the key in so you can move the steering wheel and loosen this lever. The way that's done is to press the little plastic levers top and bottom and just let it hang. It'll then be possible to manipulate this out of place, turning the steering wheel at the same time. It, it, it twists sideways and it'll, it'll, it'll wrangle its way out. Instrument cluster is two torque screws, one here and one there. That's out. Then there's a little lever at the top here. So you press that up and the whole thing will come forward. Well, the fault has finally turned out to be a poor connection to pin number seven on the immobiliser. Looking at this wiring diagram, that's the pin that connects through to the ECU in the engine bay. I'll show you where that is. So looking at the immobiliser, it's this connection on the back of the immobiliser. Each sleeve within the connector has got a tiny slot and I've made this special tool out of an old nail which I was able to bend down the sleeve and compress it slightly just enough to make a good connection. Possibly one of the most difficult faults I've ever had to find but I must say I'm pleased to have got there. Thank you very much for watching.